Hey, what's up? I'm Inezalea from ToleratedCinematics.com and today I will be showing you how to walk through a wall using Adobe After Effects. Let's get started. After Effects and I have provided this footage file that you can use to follow along with this tutorial. Do not watch at this stupid thing in my hair right here. I actually uh, passed some plants and some of the flower got left behind. But he's doing all right right now. No flowers were harmed making this video. Okay, so I will drag this footage into a new composition. And what I will do is scale it up just so I can get rid of this plant because it's moving a lot and I actually want to freeze part of that frame. You could also go and mask it out, but I just want to key this out a little bit like so. And there we go. So now it's scaled up nice and tight. And if we're going to see it, this video, I actually put two parts in it. So one part where the wall is clean and then one part where I'm against the wall, walking out of, out of the wall towards the camera. So what I want to do is right here at that position where I'm actually in frame, which is right here, I will go to edit and split this layer. And what I will do with my background layer is actually right click time freeze frame and I will make this as long as I want it to be. Then I will take a few seconds in time. I'm also going to right click composition settings, actually zero this out so I can actually see my real time code here. So let's say two seconds in, I want myself starting to appear and then I walk out right here. So this is the part of me being inside of the wall. So what I'll do is go over here with my time scrubber, click on that layer and go to edit split layer again. Now I'm going to click on this layer and I'm going to duplicate it. So I'm going to edit duplicate and what I want to do now is just uncheck one of these. I'm also going to uh, toggle off all the audio for all of these files. Click on this layer and what we want to do is double click on it so it actually opens itself up as a layer and not in the composition itself. And then we're going to pick our roto brush tool right here. Go to the beginning of that file, I'm holding shift and going to the beginning submitted with the scrubber that's going to make sure that you are at the first frame of this layer. Right here in this timeline, we're going to, um, well, right here with our roto brush, we're going to start and uh, draw ourselves out. One thing that I'm noticing right here is I'm going back to composition. My resolution isn't set at full. If we're going to use a roto brush, I suggest you take it up to full resolution. That's going to give you the best result possible. So go back to that layer by double clicking on it or just going right here in the tab layer. Zoom in a little bit and just start dra drawing something like this. So and just draw yourself out right here. You can see that it's not perfect yet. What you want to do for this first frame, this is actually the most important frame. So you want to remove these parts. Removing, you can do this with holding Alt and dragging right here. And then just drag right here in between my legs. Uh, well, with the Alt, of course. And just take your time to make this perfect. So I took the time to go through it all. It doesn't look perfect, but it doesn't have to be perfect for this uh, particular shot. What you want to do also right here, you see this kind of uh, extra timeline with some arrows in it. Make sure it's lasting all the way till the end. And then what I will do is hold shift and press page down on the keyboard, move 10 frames and see how our roto brush is actually updating. It looks okay. So I'm going to add once again 10 frames and actually I'm going all the way till the end of my layer right here and it's going to calculate how it should follow uh, my body uh, using this technique. So it's actually looking at all the movement in the scene and trying to adapt to that. So uh, we have ourselves keyed out pretty good, uh, well good enough for this case and then I will click on this button right here to freeze that frame. Okay, we can go back to the main composition right here. We can see ourselves like so. Looks okay, looks great. Uh, we can apply an effect now. So what I want to do is actually fade myself in from that wall. So click on this video file and go to layer pre-compose it. And we're going to move all the attributes inside and rename this to character or whatever you want to name it. I'm actually going to jump in here and just trim this like so. Trim comp to work area, go back to that composition just so it's equally in length as the layer below. 
Okay, so here we have it. And going to the beginning of this uh, layer again, what I want to do is go to the mask tool, the ellipse tool, and I want to drag around the parts that are first going to come out of the wall. So that's going to be my head, this part of my body, then the hands maybe, and the legs right here. So what I want to do is click on the center of my head right here and just make something like so. And there we have it. I'm going to open up the mask option right here and I'm also going to lower the uh, uh, the expansion of the mask just like so. I'm also going to feather it up quite a bit. Then I'm going to click on the stopwatch for the mask expansion, move a few frames like so, and just make it come yeah, like uh, just make it visible again. Okay, so here we have our, my head coming through the wall. The feather is a little bit too much. I'm going to make it a little bit softer like so. And there we have this part. Okay, so now click on the mask, go to edit, duplicate or hold control D. And I'm also going to double click on that mask, move it a little bit lower and maybe reshape it a little bit so it matches my chest right here. And there we go. So now we'll have something like this and as you can see, it's actually looking like there is some 3D depth in here. And of course, this is all fake and you could go and do it in real 3D and, and create a 3D depth map and you can really get crazy with this effect, but it's not necessary. It looks okay. It's also going fa very fast. So I'm going to duplicate this mask again, double click on it and maybe lower it, maybe rotate it like so and make it look like a leg right here. Click on it, duplicate it move it to the other leg, click on it, duplicate it and move to the arm right here. And there we go. So now we're starting to see my body like so. So everything is coming forward and now all we want to do is actually expand it a little bit more or we're going to duplicate this mask and actually position one in the center right here. Um, maybe we should make this one a little bit bigger and just offset it in time. So uh, what I will do is open up the last layer here of these masks, which is the center mask, I suppose. Let's click on it. Um, I think so, okay. So what I wanna do here at the end is I want to increase the mask expansion so I'm sure everything is showing and I want to offset these two keyframes a little bit more to the right. So now we have something like this and make sure of course that right here we're not showing any part of the body so now we have this animation I'm actually noticing that I waited a little bit too long here to uh, come through the wall I should have cut my footage a little bit sooner but it's okay I suppose So what I'm going to do actually is uh, keep it as it is right here. So we have this part really cool, um, but as you can see, we have the shadows right here that just kick in all of a sudden. So what I want to do is right here, I'm actually going to start fading this uh, video file in. So I will drag it over right here, press T on the keyboard, change the opacity to zero, click on the stopwatch for the opacity, like a few frames forward, just change it to 100. So now actually our original uh, video file is actually fading in and it starts to look like we're actually coming true now. Okay, click on that ex uh, exact same character composition right here. I'm going to look for rough and edges and this is a really cool effect that can really sell the effect because currently the feather is really soft. So I'm going to apply this to my character composition and what I will want to do is increase the border to something like 20. Uh, for the edge sharpness, I'm going to set this to 0.5 and I'm also going to increase the complexity to something like 10 or maybe let's say 6. And let's play with the feather right here so you can really go crazy. Um, but this is already improving in the visuals. Maybe you want to change the border to 40, but now you're actually like it's uh, using kind of the grunge and texture of the wall itself. So this is really cool. Okay, so I'm coming forward here, it looks great. So another thing that I want to do is actually duplicate this uh, character layer, edit duplicate, and go to layer, pre-compose this and move it again in the attribute. And use this as a character uh, scale, for example, and click OK. Open up that composition, click on this layer, press S on the keyboard, and just scale it up a few um, percentages. Go back to your footage wall right here. 
and now you see that we have a scaled up version and a smaller version we're going to toggle off the scaled version so you can't actually see it but what I want to do is actually right click new and add a new adjustment layer put it below our character right here and go to edit uh, well effects <laughs> distort and we're going to apply a displacement map the displacement light map that we're going to use is going to be the character scale that we just created and now if we're going to increase this to 100 right here you're going to see some displacement around myself and this is really going to look like you're coming through the wall there is some warping well distortion on the wall but you're looking pretty normal so um, I'm going to the beginning of my timeline again click on the stopwatch for um, my horizontal and vertical displacement go to where I'm already outside of the wall or maybe where I'm starting to fade in the next shot and change it back to zero so now it's actually using some displacement here as you can see really cool and maybe you want to last it a little bit longer even so I'm going to select all of these keyframes right here uh, well not the masks what am I doing here uh, for the adjustment layer press U on the keyboard select these keyframes and all the way till here and actually make sure that they disappear before we fade in this one else it's not going to look okay I s noticed so okay this looks pretty great okay so we need a little bit more time to fade this shot in here okay this is going to look a little bit better okay so just um, figuring out the exact same uh, well the exact time code for the shadow 2 to fade in is going to make it look realistic because it came a little bit too late right now but now it looks okay in my opinion and of course you can make it slower if you want to you can really take your time for this um, but of course my shot is a little bit too short so I'm going to select all of my masks right here and maybe extend it just a bit alright really cool so another thing that I did is actually um, added a new adjustment layer to my scene and I applied the wiggle preset I'm also working on a wiggle preset v2 and I know I've been telling this for a while now um, but I didn't have time to finish it yet it's going to come out very soon but if I apply this right here set this to 1 and 1 right here and maybe this to 15 uh, we have some motion in here like uh, it's not shot on a tripod it's going to give it a little bit more of a dynamic look to it so that's uh, pretty cool so that's basically it the only thing that I would suggest is taking a little bit more time here in the animation to come in you can do that by um, the, at, the, at the beginning of your video to make sure that you are rotoscoping a little bit longer maybe uh, make this video file last up until here so we have double in length and that's going to make it look a little bit better even but we can see that it's really well it really looks like it comes in 3d so that's uh, essentially what we're trying to achieve right here we have the nice distortion you can also go back in the scale right here and scale it up even more if you want to and this will affect more areas of this wall uh, to be uh, like so you can also go to the uh, scale effect here and maybe increase the border like a lot for uh, the rough and edges and also lower the edges softness right here that's going to soften it also a little bit like so so I'm going to scale it up even more and let's look at the result here okay this is a little bit too exaggerated in my opinion so make sure that it's smaller and there we go and maybe this to 50 but just make it softer and there we go okay so this looks pretty good and there we have it actually so this is basically how to walk through a wall um, I haven't seen any tutorials on this to um, make it look a little bit better like this I hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you did uh, give this video a like also definitely check out our website we have a bunch to offer a lot of cool assets for filmmakers and whatever motion graphics artists we have some really nice packs to offer so check it out a link will be put in the description and then I'll see you in the next one Goodbye.